at my face. Holy shit. This is me a few years ago before I was baking. Ugh. <gasps> We call this look the greasy hot mess, your makeup's all over your face look. Hey beautiful people, today we're doing a video that is so necessary, so important. Something that is gonna change your makeup game when you start doing this, and that is the art of baking. So there are so many things we could tell you about baking, but we're gonna break it down for you guys. We're gonna make it the easiest, most important video you ever watch when it comes to baking. So baking is crucial. Did you hear my voice go high? If you don't bake, one, you're gonna look very greasy. Two, your makeup will move all over the place. And three, I can't do three here. And three, if you bake, you actually look less cakey. I'm gonna teach you guys the baking basics, but then I'm also gonna give you guys some very important tips in places that people don't know they should bake. It's not my life. <laughs> First, I'm gonna tell you guys about the baking powder. So I only use our baking powder, Easy Bake baking powder. I use it in banana bread, but if you're not using this, I do feel you should invest in the right baking powder. Ones that have a little bit of pigment help to kind of brighten your skin. This one, you know, ours do have pigments. And also try to find one that doesn't have titanium dioxide, you know, zinc oxide. A lot of these ingredients sometimes illuminate when you are taking a picture. And there are definitely affordable ones out there that will give you that look. We'll put a list of them down below so you guys can check out some of our favorite baking powders. And I I do like the ones that are pigmented, so do try to look for one that is pigmented as well. You're gonna notice it just brightens up. It almost like kind of works as a concealer as well, which is so beautiful. It's so nice when you get like a little added like oomph with your baking powder. And if you guys bake already, please let us know in the survey above. I wanna know, I wanna, <laughs> I don't know, it's over here. <laughs> it's one of these places. Please let us know if you guys bake in the survey above because I really wanna know if you guys are baking. And I know for a fact, even if you are, you're gonna learn something in this video that will definitely help you to take your making game, your baking game to the next level. So for tools, tools are super, super easy. I love to bake with a sponge. A damp sponge is so amazing when you're baking. It's one of my preferred tools for baking. And we've done a lot of videos on complexion and the best way to, you know, really get this beautiful overall look. So if you go ahead and you, you know, run your, your sponge under water. I like to squeeze it about 10 to 15 times. I get it really soaked. Then I take a towel and I basically just go ahead and squeeze all the water. And then I take a tissue. The tissue is crucial because the towel is going to do a really good job to take out some water, but the tissue is going to make sure that you don't have those spots where you have powder stuck to your face. And it looks like a little uneven, looks a little blotchy. Baking is supposed to make your skin look flawless, airbrushed, and absolutely smooth. Make sure that you don't need to touch up your face throughout the day. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to Give it a nice little spanking. Make sure there's a nice little bit of powder here. There's a lot. I like to put a lot of powder. So I'm grabbing my sponge, which has been properly wet. I basically like to take the corner of it and I like to put it right into the powder. And there's a nice amount of powder there. It's just completely coated. What you can do if you're baking for the first time and maybe you don't wanna go super heavy, you can take it on a towel or you can use the back of your hand and just pat it a few times to take any excess product off. There's still a nice amount of product there, but I've removed some of the product so that way I can get a more sheer kind of coverage to the under eye area. So I'm gonna go and I'm going right underneath my eyes. I'm putting the corner and basically letting that corner of the sponge fit to the corner of my eye and my nose and I'm placing it there first. Now I know there's a lot of rules on baking. People are like, oh, you got to put on, who has time to bake? You don't actually have to leave it on that long. In all honesty, I actually don't leave my under eye area that long because most of the time I am in between meetings. Sometimes I'm in meetings and I'm doing this. I mean, you know, girls gotta do what girls gotta do. And I'm kind of doing little stippling patting motions, very, very tiny, going up just a couple millimeters and patting it in. And I really like to use a sponge for this and I'm going across. Just using any excess product, not wasting anything, picking up that product and dragging it out. So this is light baking. You know, we did a little bit of baking. We set everything in place. Now we're acting a little bit as a highlighter and I want to snatch my nose. So I'm going to go ahead and go along the nose now. And around my nostrils, this is called the navial fold. I smile like crazy and I'm not going to stop. That's just not going to happen. I just, I don't know. I like to laugh and I like people who make me laugh and I like people who laugh at my jokes even more. <laughs> if you laugh at my jokes, you make me really happy. <laughs> I know I look crazy right now. This is not what you guys were hoping to look like. You're not trying to achieve this look, but trust me at the end, you're going to love it. I'm going to put a small amount on the chin right here because I get shiny. So this area, you can see I'm putting a less amount. I don't really necessarily want to highlight and whatever's left here, I'm going to go again, a very small amount, we're baking again. Some areas that we're baking, some areas that we apply a little bit more and we're using a heavier amount to bake and highlight. So to bring forward. And I'm gonna show you guys some tricks at the end with that. A lot of people you'll see like to do this kind of trick where they take a little bit of excess powder and they'll go right under the contour. You've probably seen that. What that's gonna do if you have a heart-shaped face, it's gonna bring your jaw out. For me, I have a square face. So if I did do it, I would go really close to my lips and I would just bring it out a little bit. You can see this right here, it's gonna widen my face. You can see the difference already 
in camera, if I'm looking straight in the camera, this side of my face looks whiter than that side of my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and match it, but personally for me, I like a little bit more of a cute face. So I'm, I don't always widen it too much, but just to make it match. And then I'm taking whatever's left and just dragging it out. The longer you let the powder set, the more it's going to kind of lift and brighten. And if you feel like your face is getting cakey, make sure you go back with your sponge and just remove any excess product. The sponge will actually soak up excess product. So you can see there's product on my sponge. That's one of my favorite techniques. I remember actually when Patrick Todd did my face, he's an amazing makeup artist and he's so amazing at skin. That was one thing that he did. He would always kind of like, you know, when he felt like things were cakey, he would take a sponge and just like, you know, use it, bounce it all over your face. So that was a great tip that I learned from him. And I apply it now a lot within the baking process. So um, I'm just going between my brows because I sweat there and then I'm dragging it around the brow and just letting that go upwards okay baking brows all I've done so far is apply a brow pencil I just need to use the new eyebrow queen brow pencil just did like some small strokes but you can already see it I mean it's only been like a couple hours and I have an oily brow happening ah! it literally bothers me so bad because I don't want to get into it but first of all it's not sexy and secondly if you have too much oil being produced in your brows it actually causes your brow hairs to fall out that's not good either so okay I'm gonna show you guys really quickly I'm gonna grab a little bit of powder here and this brush is my favorite for doing it it's just basically a short kind of stiff brush that has a little bit of a pinched ferrule and basically pushing the powder into the corner here just applying a small amount of powder onto the end of the brush and I'm just gonna tap it onto my hand I got a little bit of fallout but not too much and I'm gonna first start by putting most of the product and I'm just basically pressing it in so you can see my brows look kind of gray that's the look we're going for do not be alarmed and I usually like to put most of it in the front because I feel like it really softens and gives you a little bit of a softer brow in the front and and then I just drag the extra product out. I like really see a big difference in my makeup when I do this. Like, I sometimes like to use the other side of the brush to get into like the ends right here where it gets thinner. And I really, I'm not brushing it, I'm going into the brow hairs. I'm trying to get deep in there to make sure that, you know, it really does absorb that oil even after I brush out the powder. We're gonna leave this for a couple minutes. This I do actually like to leave. I like to have the oils from the brow pencil, the brow pomade, whatever you're using, kind of soak up the powder so it stays in place. So now the last step we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and brush away the brow. And I just grab a spoolie and I literally just brush it out. And I go kind of outwards the way the hair grows or the way that I want the hair to kind of sit. And sometimes when you're doing this, hair will kind of fall or powder will kind of fall in your lashes. So you can just brush that away as that happens. Or if you wanna apply mascara, make sure that you keep that for the end. My brows were baking for about 10 to 15 minutes, which is actually like, okay, you wanna bake the brows longer than anything else. And now the final step for baking, you can leave it there. You don't have to do anything else. But personally for me, just to ensure that I don't look cakey because baking is not about that. I do like to use a setting spray. I like to just spray the back of my sponge and then I just mix it with strobe. And again, you guys can get more details on this in our skincare video, but I'm just basically setting everything in place like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my complexion, just do a little contour to my nose, add a little blush, a little extra highlight, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I am baked for the day. I'm good to go. I'm gonna go back to my office and get some business done. But I hope that you guys really learn a lot from this video and hopefully you change your makeup game with all of these tips. Let me know down below what you guys want to see. Any more one-on-ones, I am so excited to give you guys the best information on makeup, beauty, fashion, business, life, relationships, maybe. <laughs> Let me know what you guys want down below. I love you all so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.